What's up, everyone? Thomas here with For Real, and I am so excited this year to be covering the Seattle International Film Festival in person. Um, the past couple years have been kind of rough for in-person experiences, but uh, but it's finally time to be back in person here in Seattle, and I am very much looking forward to being able to attend once again in person and uh, and have a great time with really awesome people like the guests that I have on the phone right now. And I'm joined today by Taylor Baker from Drinking the Movies in Seattle. Taylor, welcome. Thanks for having me. I didn't know I was on a phone, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> this is phone, video call, like, look, I, I'm, I'm Zoom, ancient. laptop, whatever. I'm ancient, okay? I use I use archaic forms of communication. <laughs> actually, this is, so just a quick story. This is actually a thing that happened to me this week. I was in a Teams meeting uh, with, uh, with some advertising partners, and I needed to send a JPEG, and I could not find the button. <laughs> and it was just this, like aging moment for me like where's the paper clip shouldn't there be a paper clip here i'll just we just need to get back to the good old days when there were paper clips that said that that's where you put the attachment right it was, it was a weird... <laughs> <laughs> and then you were like oh i could just drag and drop it wouldn't let me i really could not figure out why teams will not let me send this attachment and so you know i'm just i'm getting old okay that that is the moral of this story so forgive me and my archaic my archaic terminology <laughs> anyway you you are in seattle um so yes. this is kind of home base for us how are you feeling about uh, about sif coming up this is home base. I'm excited to be able to attend it for the first time in person as uh, accredited press. Um, you know, it's been a, a long journey through COVID and doing all the things we've been doing at TIFF and, and VIF these last few years before mm -hmm. SIF has reopened. So it's, mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to uh, go to our back uh, yard and do this instead of kind of, you know, traveling across country lines and, and state lines uh, mm -hmm. virtually to do this. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to go experience some of the, the more interesting foreign films that they have. And then a few yeah. uh, of these American language films that I'm actually very excited to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think SIF has They've always had a very, and not, I mean, all the film festivals you go to have very diverse um, uh, sets of, of films and, and types of movies, but I do notice a, a, a very big uh, um, focus on international film and, uh, and foreign language film uh, at SIF, and I really appreciate that and love that, that we're bringing films from all over the world here to Seattle, um, where we can see them on the big screen, so that's... Yes. Uh, yeah or at home streaming or at home streaming <laughs> because they do uh they are doing a uh, a hybrid festival i guess so yep. they're folk they're fo focused on pulling off the the in-person film festival again but there is an online edition as well um most is geolocked to the united states um or actually or to sorry to washington you know where it's some are geolocked to washington mm -hmm. i i think most are just geolocked to the united states yeah but i think something like over 70 percent of the the titles are uh, available online so mm -hmm. uh th there is a, a large selection compared yeah. to previous years which which is awesome uh you know we've talked about this before how we love that film festivals are embracing um the the, the online version of of their festival um as we still get back to to doing in person so we continue hoping that that continues to be the case and uh and you know keep access to film festivals as uh um, as yeah, I mean, as the, the number one thing for these independent films is accessibility. Mm -hmm. So if you can make it so that someone that's living, you know, I don't know, out in the boonies that needs mm -hmm. satellite internet sandwiched <laughs> between Bellingham and Cedar Woolley oh, can, can stream something. <laughs> Wonder who you could be talking about. <laughs> I, I don't know. They're not in this call. <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> That's funny. Well, the Seattle National Film Festival goes from April 14th to the 24th, and they have tons of movies to choose from. As yeah, we were the saying, the opening night film is Navalny. Yeah. It played at uh, Sundance as, as a special feature. Mm -hmm. And the closing night film is Call Jane, which I think also played at Sundance. It did. Yep. So uh, th those are the, the opening and closers. You know, and this is what I've always said about uh, Seattle Film Festival. Before I became accredited and was, and was um, participating with all these uh, film festivals, it was always really nice that the Seattle Film Festival was able to bring these Sundance, South by Southwest, 
Fest, Toronto Film Festival films to Seattle back when virtual film festivals weren't really a thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've always appreciated uh, SIF for happening in April, or I guess back then it was May um, and June, but in the springtime, in, in time to get these big releases that were coming, that were debuting at uh, Sundance and South by um, and TIFF so that, uh, so that locals here could then have access to them before they, you know, they would sooner than they reach the mainstream. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, next year, you know, anything that played at TIFF that people didn't fly up to Toronto to see, mm -hmm. this will probably be their first chance to, to see it um, yep. unless it, it plays at a film festival beforehand. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, if they can continue to offer that hybrid feature as well, it's going to really change the game for accessibility and people being able to see these films that they wouldn't otherwise have an opportunity to see. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, well, let's jump into some conversation about uh, about SIF selections. We're going to start with recommendations. So as I mentioned, we have seen a number of these films that, that SIF is bringing to the Seattle area. Um, and uh, and we're excited to share a few recommendations and things that we have seen already that we think will be good to add to your uh, to watch list. So Taylor, I'm gonna let you start with the first one. What is your first recommendation? Let's talk about a movie we've never talked about of course. privately or publicly. <laughs> Let's talk about Cooper Rafe's Cha Cha Real Smooth. Shocking. <laughs> Who would have thought that we would talk about Cha Cha Real Smooth? <laughs> we only recommended it at Sundance at South by Southwest and, and every breath in between since then. Um, it, it's a fantastic display of a writer, director, um, and actor. Uh, he gets the best performance out of Dakota Johnson in recent mm -hmm. memory, probably since Suspiria. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just a real treat. It's a positive um experience of watching it but it has deep wells of emotionality it is not uh, a cookie cutter film in any way and the emotional resonance that is achieved by the end is uh, uh very earned and uh very sincere it was acquired by apple tv plus who just won uh oscar for the last film they acquired from sundance coda not just so an oscar it, but it, best they, that one best picture so. yes so they, it's got uh a big legacy to to hold up to but i i think cha-cha real smooth is, is uh certainly um a good fit for apple tv plus and if you like dakota it, you'll probably respond well to this film yeah i think you're right that endearing nature to it i mean we uh it's it's just charming so, it's just charming so charming and the more i think about it the, the better it ages in my in my mind like it's one of those films where um you know it's fun to watch um, but then you kind of think on it and you sit on it and it, and it just gets better and better. And it's it, like, at least in my mind, and I, I can't wait for the opportunity to see it again. I, I wasn't able to, to see it at South by, but, um, but I can't stop recommending it. And, uh, and for those in Seattle, this, this is the, your chance to, to catch a really good movie before it hits the mainstream. Yeah. It, it kind of almost feels like an instant classic, which we haven't had in a long time. Oh yeah. But you know, something like Forrest Gump where it's just like, yeah, I could watch that again. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cha Cha Real Smooth is like, yeah, I could watch that again. Sure, why not? Like, it, it doesn't seem like something that's going to lose anything in rewatch over time. So, um, yeah, I, I highly recommend it. How about you? What's your your first recommendation? Well, I'm trying to pull it up, but that's that internet you were talking about is going super slow for me right now. Um, <laughs> my first recommendation is going to be. Um, another Sundance film that we both uh, watched and enjoyed. I think you enjoyed a little bit more than I did, but I still am willing to recommend. And that is-, is this Rebecca Hall's Resurrection? Is it Rebecca Hall's Resurrection? It definitely is Rebecca Hall and Resurrection. Um, I think that uh, Resurrection, it, it's um, directed by Andrew uh, Simmons. Is that how you pronounce his last name? Um, but this was, this movie got so much buzz at Sundance because of how I don't know is the visceral the right word like there's there's such a um uh, like a uh, under the closing like a, twenty minutes is yeah. a, a pure what the fuck you know so and that's one thing that that uh, how do I put this like I appreciated the closing twenty minutes but for me the highlight of the film was that monologue. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's like, I don't know how long it is, but there's this extensive one cut monologue that Rebecca Hall gives um, uh, midway through the film. And it is just arresting. Like 
it's so fascinating how attentive you you can be on it's literally one shot and just Rebecca Hall talking it's almost a monotonous kind of uh kind of speech but it doesn't cut it's that one shot and and it's so engaging I I think after (laughs) she was done when it finally cut back to who she's talking to I then breathed I was like Oh yeah, I stopped breathing for that because that was just so, um, yeah, so uh, um, yeah, really, really good. So, but yeah, it also it it ends on a, on a very like bizarre note. Um, but I think that that's what makes it so uh, uh, such a uh, awesome cinematic experience for me is the questions that it generates. It's one of those things where you're trying to figure out like what's real and what isn't like what's imagined what what is actually happening here are they literally talking about that or is it figuratively like what's going on here so and then um, they're showing it visually physically so (laughs) i guess it's not figuratively right right uh, yeah it's a it's a wild experience um but definitely kind of that under the skin kind of suspense um uh and uh, simmering simmering kind of suspense i i love the experience if you like great performances by female actresses, this is one to definitely watch. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Especially, and I mean, this def- got a lot of buzz because I mean, the night house had just released in theaters and that was a, that was also a really big one to see her in. And so, yeah, I don't know. Just, I think that she's, she's on a hot streak right now. And uh, she, she's been good for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vicky, Christina, Barcelona, mm-hmm. um, Christine, back in, I think, 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a phenomenal performer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's definitely on display here. It's wonderful. So that's my recommendation for this one is, uh, is Resurrection. Uh, my next recommendation is a film that played at TIFF uh, last year called A Head's Knee from Nadav Lapid. It is not a film, much like Resurrection, that I responded all that positively to, um, but it is undoubtedly a, a, a work of singular vision and it it is sincere and creative and uh kind of flummoxing and it, it's one of those sticky movies that even if you don't like it you you just kind of never forget the sense of uh how you felt watching it and i i think that that's always the sign of of art worth engaging with uh whether or not you like it if something sticks with you and and you can't quite shake it and it's not that you hated it viscerally it's it's just that it was complex and um had different stylistic tendencies than you would normally see formally and uh kind of a a counter climax that is performative it's got all these weird little things going for it um and I, I think it's fantastic that you can go see it in the theater here in Seattle. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen this one pop up at, at film festivals and I've kind of glossed over it. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I haven't had the chance to see it yet. And so it's nice that it's coming up on your recommendations list. So maybe maybe I'll be able to make the time for it this time. I, <laughs> I would recommend engaging with it because I suspect you won't like it. But I mm-hmm. think that the reason why you don't like it would be very fun for you to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I well, think that, you'd have a lot to say. <laughs> that's intriguing. Oh man. That well, I guess I have to see it. <laughs> How about you? What's uh, your next recommendation? So my next recommendation is going to be one that I can't talk a whole lot about, but um, I have had a chance to screen it early. It's the world premiere of the film I'll Show You Mine, uh, directed by Megan Griffiths. Um, it's a it's a very small cast in a very limited setting kind of film, but essentially it's about this writer um, who is interviewing um, her nephew um, uh, about his um, pansexual lifestyle and alter ego um, that he got famous for um, and has, has since, um, um, uh, I guess, not been, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's, there's a word. Anyway, he, he had an alter ego that he got famous for and has fallen from uh, that fame uh, since then. And this is kind of both of their ways to kind of re uh, recapture her as, as a as a uh, beloved author this is her way to kind of get back into that spotlight and him uh, as a way to kind of uh, get him back into um, into a spotlight as well uh, I like this one because I am a fan of movies that have 
you know, two people having a conversation. To me, this actually reminds me very much of a film that I covered at South by Southwest last year called um, See You Then, which was also a two person conversation, limited setting where they're just talking about each other's lives. Um, and essentially it kind of, it builds to some big revelations and some uncovering of secrets. And uh, and I, um, I can't say too much again about it because this is the world premiere. Uh, and, but I do think that it was, it was definitely in line with what I like out of these kind of films enough for me to make it a recommendation for you at the festival. All right. <laughs> My final recommendation is the New York Asian Film Festival selection uh, from last summer, Barbarian Invasion from Tan Ooh. Chi Mui. Uh, she stars, writes, and directs in this film. Um, <clears throat> it is the story of a woman trying to reclaim her acting career um so it is a little bit metatextual and she um needs to be able to perform these martial arts stunt work and so half the film is her kind of learning uh at a dojo how to do these moves and playing um like a behind the scenes type of a drama and then there's a, a turning point in the film where uh, a major event happens that involves her son and it turns into an actual action movie at that point where she has to go uh, at attack and kill people. And it, it just balances that line of um, loving the craft of filmmaking and also being referential to filmmaking in, in a way that, that was really fun for me and it's, it's also very unique to see a female writer director performer who's doing all her own stunts that, that's creating an action film filled with action choreography that's uh up there with you know things like shang chi as far as what they're doing physically um so i highly recommend this it it was uh one of my favorite films that i watched all of last summer and the idea that you can go watch this in a theater here in seattle it just makes me a very happy person <laughs> this is fascinating because this movie was on my um my short list of things that i wanted to watch um but i watched the trailer because the premise the premise is it sounds great like i love the premise but i watched the trailer and was entirely underwhelmed by that uh so I'm happy to have your ringing endorsement of it because I think it sounds like a really great premise. Um, but yeah, that trailer didn't do it any service. And I haven't so... seen the trailer. I watched it before they had proper marketing materials, right. we'll say. <laughs> right, right. And I guess proper, I don't, depending on how you define proper, maybe they still don't have proper marketing materials. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it does sound, it, it really piqued my interest when I read the description um, and, uh, but it was on my, I have to see if I can, if I can make it to the, uh, the screening. I'm not sure if I can, but it definitely piqued my interest. And so I'm glad to... it, it's worth rearranging and prioritizing for ah, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't think that you'll get another chance to see it in the theater. And it's, uh, That's a good point. it's a singular yeah. type of a work where you, you just probably won't come across another thing like this, mm -hmm. um, for another decade where, where it's a female writer, director performer who's doing the stunt choreography right. herself like you know it, it's basically like if jackie chan also wrote and directed like <laughs> <laughs> that's a tall order that is a tall order that's very true all right my last recommendation is something that i saw was it tribeca actually i can't remember i'm pretty sure it was tribeca i saw it last year um and uh i was a big yes, fan tribeca of, tribeca cool i was a big fan of the names uh of the of the leading cast and so i i checked it out back then um and was a fan of it so uh this film is the justice of bunny king um it is uh directed by gay soren thabit um who you had the chance to interview and it i did like you had a great conversation uh we there. we did she she learned me up on uh the the proper way of talking about rubbish bins instead of trash cans and uh there was a a, a wind screens instead of wind shields you, you know she she really educated me that's awesome i love it on the new are, zealand dialect yes the interviews are best when you're kind of like in that really casual space like yeah, that's something that i'm trying to get better at with interviews is like yeah yeah i have my questions and things that i want to address but like let's actually just like have a conversation like let's yep. just have fun with this so cool that's you know that's on uh uh, drinkinthemovies.com. Uh, you can go check that out there. Um, but anyway, this 
this is a movie um, that again caught my attention because of the cast. It stars Essie Davis. Uh, did I interviewed her? Did you interview Essie yep. as well? Yep. Yep. So yeah, I've got a podcast episode with both interviews on it. Yeah, want to check it out. So so your content does online. Mine actually is not. I have not published as of the recording of this. I have not published my uh, interview with Essie yet. So I'm looking forward yeah. to putting. Yes, um, I'm looking forward to putting that out during SIF, um, and that's some kind of uh, exclusive content um, that uh, that I recorded and I'm ready to to get published. So, um, but Essie Davis, uh, who we know from the Babadook, uh, which also played at SIF, actually, that's where I saw that. You know, I haven't seen it. Oh no, you have not seen the Babadook. I haven't seen the Babadook, but I've uh, seen a lot of her work since then. Okay, fair enough. But the Babadook is really, really good. Um, and Thomas and McKenzie, before we got to see her in Last Night in Soho, uh, so um, it was it was fun seeing her in this role and then watching her go on. To, Very um, limited supporting role. Very yes, limited. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but if you uh, watch this movie, don't expect more than five minutes of her. <laughs> she she's there, right? But uh, but yeah, I like I love seeing her in these like smaller films and also kind of seeing how her career is growing. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, um, yeah, it's it's a it's a story about this this mother who's really in in a not great place in her life, but she's trying to get things together so that she can maintain a, a relationship with her daughter. Um, who's that? Who's uh, Thomason McKenzie? And um, and it's just no, Thomason the... is her niece. Sorry, not daughter, niece. You're right, you're right. Um, but uh, um, the it, it's and it goes through, it shows the links that she's willing to go through to try to um, to try to make things work in her favor but the system is against her uh and and there's a whole lot of factors about life that are against her and it's just she has a really hard time getting ahead and she takes some extreme measures um so uh yeah i i love essie davis as as an actress i mean i i loved her in the babadook i also watched um what's the the baby one uh uh, there's another one that she's in that I really liked. So she puts on really, really good performances, really compelling uh-huh. performances. And that is definitely the case here as well. This is a really She good... disappears. She dis yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. She's not the actress S.C. Davis. She mm-hmm. is whatever the character is. Exactly. And and that's what you want out of especially a movie this emotionally compelling, right? Like when you get to the end and you realize um, you know what's going on and where this is leading like she is so invested in this character it's wonderful um uh but also just a heart-wrenching story so um that's my third recommendation is the justice of bunny king that's very good i also recommend it she was in uh nitrum which just came out as well Mm -hmm. um so if people liked uh bunny king they can return uh to Nitram, which was uh directed by her husband and she co-stars oh that's it. right that's right i think that one premiered overseas was it can at con yeah, con yeah last year nice 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 all right those are our recommendations let's let's talk about what we're looking forward to seeing brand new that we have not seen for yet. the first time the first uh time. i will storm over you and i will say that the thing i'm most <laughs> anticipating is in front of your face from hong sang Su. Uh, you know, he puts out a movie a year. Uh, my my co-host and friend, Michael Clausen, it's one of his favorite living filmmakers. It's his Steven Soderbergh, as he puts it to me. Uh, as, a, as a Steven Soderbergh fan myself, I, I can appreciate having a, a singular director who puts out a movie every single year that you're always excited to watch. And uh, In Front of Your Face is, uh, has two theatrical screenings at the festival, and I am just thrilled that we get to to watch it in a big theater because uh the last few years his films have been going kind of to vod you know so it's going to be nice to to see it on a big old curtain yeah i am so sad i probably will not be able to make it to that screening Uh, well you better change that attitude i know (laughs) So I I'm just a little bit too far from Seattle to, to make it down every day, but, uh, but yeah, that sounds like a, a, a really good one. It wasn't on my radar until you mentioned it. And so um, hopefully there is an opportunity for me to watch it at some point. So um, I guess, let me see. I was just going to like, I was just going to like riff off of yours because I think we have a lot of very similar um, 
Uh, oh, I can continue if you'd like. Uh, the yeah, next one I think yeah, is one that. that you are also anticipating from Dean Fleischer Camp. It's Marcel the Shell with shoes on. Yeah, uh, it's got Jenny Slate as the voice actress of Marcel. From what I understand, it looks like a, a stop motion um, type of an animation film. I think it's got a very short run times, like in the eighty minute range, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's coming out properly. I think in June. They yeah, announced. yeah. Dude, um, I actually I just watched the trailer for it at uh, when I went to see everything everywhere all at once, um, which you just, famously did not like. Uh, <laughs> who me? No, no, no. Let's not get it twisted. Everything everywhere all at once is a. I'm, I won't say. I'm not going to trigger you, but it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas was about to say it's a masterpiece. I was about to say, I, and I and I probably will stick to that opinion. I think it is a phenomenal piece of filmmaking, and I don't think I'm going to see anything better uh, than that this year. So, um, if if I see a movie better than Everything Everywhere All at Once, then we can just stop making movies this year. <laughs> I will be I will be good. That'll round out my top five, and and that and that's all that I need. You heard um, it here first. Thomas is a <laughs> against filmmaking oh my goodness how <laughs> dare you twist my words stop making films that's save, what he said <laughs> save your great movies to next year so that they can have a proper place on my list okay that's <laughs> that's what i'm saying um but anyway uh marcel i don't know a whole lot about this i guess it's based it's based on what a youtube series or something like it's based on some like i know that there was a short a but short, i I'm yeah. not too familiar with it i'm not either so i'm kind of going into this one blind except for the trailer that i watched and the trailer was just a whole bunch of i like it's just like hearts exuding out of me like oh my gosh this is so feel good just the trailers feel good um so I am excited for all of those uh, those positive vibes and those feel good vibes uh, with this one. And uh, in yeah, I, it, I think it's it, a feature directorial debut from Dean as well. So. That's possible. And it, what'll be really interesting is seeing this one. It's almost it's a double feature with another one that you're going to mention on this list. And I think that that double feature is going to be very uh, a very nice back to back kind of pairing. I didn't realize that it was double feature. Um, I mean, I say double feature okay. as in they're playing one after the other. I'm not, it's not like an actual double feature, but we're going out of one and okay. into the next one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I don't think it's this next uh, film from Peter Strickland, Flux Gourmet. Not that, uh, that, that, <laughs> that is, would be a uh, terrible double also, feature. <laughs> <laughs> that is also playing uh, only in theaters at the festival. Um, I think it's got two different screenings um the one on a tuesday night and one on a weekend but this is uh peter strickland's follow-up to um good hair bad hair something like that i want to say um let me in fabric in fabric fabric is Mm -hmm. is what the follow-up is um and i think it has gwendolyn christie as uh at least a co-star if not the star of the film uh, this is another one that was not on my radar until you mentioned it. I did actually see In Fabric at SIF uh, with Michael, in fact. Uh, yeah, so that was a fun time. Uh, and In Fabric was one that I had to like sit on. During the experience, I wasn't sure what to make of it. But afterward, I was like, huh, actually, that was a pretty damn good movie, right? And so it it aged well for me. And I, I'm much more, I think since then, I've become a lot more open-minded to these like these like more... Uh, offbeat kind of films and so yeah i i'm i'm interested in that. I'm, I'm actually psychological making... surrealism almost psychological surrealism absolutely in fact in fabric i kind of wish would have had a third act um that would have been really cool uh, you've opinion. said this a lot <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> that's that an would... opinion you've had for a while <laughs> I, I have um but it's great as it is and so i'm i'm looking forward to flux gourmet and seeing how this turns out and being open-minded to the the psychological surrealism is uh, surrealism if that's what the case is here um whatever it is i'm looking forward to to peace yeah he it. directed uh w- one of my favorite films of uh i think it was 2012 uh barbarian sound studio um mm-hmm. which is just a phenomenal and weird film uh built around a sound uh event So, uh, yeah, that's Flux Gourmet, uh, only in theaters. My next title that I'm most anticipating is Masaki Yuasa's Inu-O. Uh, This is the director of Night is Short, Walk On Girl and tons of other stuff. Um, He's done anthology films and um, some uh, television shows and tons of features. And this is just his latest one. And uh, I'm 
tickled that we get to see this on the big screen. So this is the one we're double featuring. So we're going to go out of NUO into Marcel with the shoes on. Uh, and I think that's just going to be a very delightful, delightful Saturday. <laughs> I, I suspect that Inuo is going to be a lot more macabre <laughs> than Marcel Probably. Michelle's shoes on. Maybe, maybe. Yes, that, that's like, going to be a fun animation weekend. Yes, that's what I'm getting at. So. Playing at being 13 and watching cartoons all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that one as well. I do have my RSVP for both of those um, and Flux, I guess, as well. So, so yeah, I'm looking forward to all of that. Awesome. Uh, my final film that I'm anticipating the most, you could say, is uh, Fernando Leon de Arona's uh, The Good Boss, the film that stars Javier Bardem, who's collaborated with on a few previous projects. And it's uh, about um, like a delegation committee coming into the business that Javier runs and him trying to keep his workers um, from compromising the desired outcome of this uh visit from the this delegation um it, it sounds just off enough that that there could be a great drama with, with comedic elements here and um you know when javier bardem is on he is on and uh he he's had a a I think two really, really well-received films with this director. So I, I'm hoping that maybe we get a third. I'm going to be optimistic about this one. Um, hopefully I, it, this is another one that wasn't on my radar until you mentioned it. Um, but it, it is available on streaming uh, during the festival. So. Yep, this is the only film on my list that you can stream. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I love having access to films you know, on streaming, but a lot of the more prestigious films don't get streaming. And so that, you know, that's an unfortunate like indicator of, of you know, where, you know, where the quality is streaming, but I'm really hoping that this is a good one that will be accessible online. So yeah. 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 And awesome. there's a, there's a lot more films that, um, are, are on my radar that especially the foreign language films oh, to have some, some great buzz around them that are streaming. Yeah. Tons of, of, foreign language of interesting foreign language films that I'm that I'm making a list of, of what I want to see that are streaming and so it'll be a really good uh streaming program um but yeah I so we'll see how this one turns out right yeah is there any other uh films that you wanted to bring up for anticipation or any honorable mentions you know I'm just going to run through some quick honorable mentions um just because I, I wanted, I'm, put, I am anticipating putting out extra coverage for these during the festival. Um, there's a short film that I had, I was had the chance to cover um, uh, ahead of the festival called El Carrito, um, written and directed um, by Zaida Parani, um, and it's. Uh, I, I had the chance to interview her, and that interview is currently online right now. Um, the The short film is a part of the um, is a part of the international uh, relations uh, shorts program, and I'm pretty sure it's screening on Sunday in person and also online. Um, so I, I connected with this film enough to request a, an interview uh, with, with the uh, director and we had a great conversation and so uh, I learned a lot about the street vending uh, uh, scene in, in New York and, uh, and really about that community and I think this movie does, uh, or this short film does um, give a lot of exposure to what that looks like beyond that transaction that we do as just you know casual pedestrians. There's a lot uh, that goes into that world, and I think she, um, she puts a lot of that into this film. Um, and so there's that one, El Carrito. Again, you can find um, a review from uh, our writer Marty and an interview with me and uh, and Zaida on um, uh, for, uh, this is for real.com. The other one that I'm going to honorably mention really quick is uh, one of my favorite films out of South by Southwest, which is Linoleum. Um, directed you by... didn't say cha-cha real smooth. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that one. I could go on for days. This podcast would be hours long if we were actually like diving more into cha-cha real smooth. Dedicated cha-cha I coverage. I know, right? 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Linoleum, uh, directed by Colin West, was just this massive surprise for me at South By. Um, and uh, I think actually you recommended it to me. And mm -hmm. I'm... Uh, I'm really happy that you did. I was because... convinced that you would like it because it has one of the strongest finales I've seen at a film festival. Endings 
make a movie, right? An indie for can make Thomas. A, for me, no, 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 for everyone. Actually, like they make a incorrect. Break a, yeah, they make or break a movie for me, right? If you have a, a a mediocre film and a great ending, I will sing praises about that film. Fortunately, I actually thought that Linoleum is good throughout, with a really great high uh, high point uh, emotionally at the end. And I also liked a lot of the yeah. emotional. One, one of the best the en- ending edited sequences Mm -hmm. just in recent memory whether you respond to it well or whatever like Mm -hmm. the editing is superb fantastic so um i definitely want to recommend uh that one uh really quick and i'm hoping to get uh, an interview in with colin uh while he's in town so trying to make that happen um, and then uh, the last honorable mention I want to make is for a film called Midday Black, Midnight Blue. Uh, this one stands out to me because it was filmed on Whidbey Island, my home place. I was born in Oak Harbor, Washington, which is on Whidbey Island. I, I frequent there a lot, so I'm very, very familiar with the island. And it's always nice to see, uh, to see a local setting appear uh, in, in film. Um, Midday Black, Midnight Blue uh, is... Um, uh, this is the world premiere, if I'm not mistaken, for that film. And I believe so. Um, I think it's a hybrid film playing online and at the fest uh, in it is. theaters. Yes, it is. And uh, um, yeah, so you can you can catch it online. You know, we're kind of talking about uh, online programming. I think this is one uh, that would be interesting to check out online. Uh, it's from directors. That, I was looking up the director's name. Sorry, it was uh, Samantha Soul and Daniel Talbot. Um, so I think it's direct tutorial debut for both of them if i'm not mistaken i think so as well so it's super cool and 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 we've talked a lot before about how much we like our 90 minute run times this one is clocks in at 88 minutes but uh um yeah it it seems interesting and i'm I'm looking forward to uh to supporting a film that was filmed on whitby island yes i'm pretty sure that um there was a Merritt Weaver in it as well, um, who's mm-hmm. just a fantastic actress. And I, I don't know if she actually plays a significant role or not, but that her being in the movie is what drew me to it to begin with. What, not Whidbey Island? That was that's your big yeah. selling point. Uh, <laughs> n- there's very few locations in Washington State that I would care to watch in that film. <laughs> Merritt Weaver, I'll, I'll, I'll go out of my way for that. That's fair. That's fair. Any uh, any last titles that you want to mention before we wrap up? Uh, I I don't think so. I mean, I mean, there's tons and tons and tons, but you know, mm-hmm. we we got to the the key highlights. Obviously, on the other side of the festival, we'll have uh, have I'm sure a totally different list of yeah. the films that people should be seeking um, moving forward. Um, just thrilled to be able to go see Barbarian Invasion in a mm-hmm. theater in the United States of America. That's a pretty cool thing. Right. <laughs> I'm uh yeah, I I mean I I I want to give a shout out again to Sif for for such great programming. I mean, the programming is so awesome that we're missing uh a, a bunch of really big titles. Petite Maman is is screening and we loved mm-hmm. that one when we saw it at uh, That at comes out in uh the end of this month, I think. Mhm. I think uh, it comes out when the unbearable weight of massive talent comes out. Right. So, you know, uh, that's one that we kind of um, had to gloss over. And there's other ones like, uh, I mean, the hill with uh, the hill where lionesses roar. I wasn't the biggest one on that, but that's kind of a big title making the rounds uh, at at film festivals. Um, And uh, yeah, so there's a lot of of really great movies coming out. The Duke. We haven't talked about the Duke. Um, and so programming is fantastic at SIF. So there's a lot of movies to to put on your to watch list. And oh yeah, if, if we pulled yeah. up our calendars, there's an endless list of things that we're planning to watch. Yes, but. <laughs> yes, yes. So alas, yeah. but we will see how many we get around to, and we will do this again at the end of the festival to check in on how everything went. Until then, Taylor, where can people find you and your content? As always, it's drinkinthemovies.com. Very cool. And uh, and you can find uh, my content at thisisforreal.com. Of course, for real spelled F-O-R-R-E-E-L. You can also find us on social media. Um, and I'll just put links in the in the in the you know the description. I think that's just easier. We're going through and a people little. People can always just go to your website and find all the links to all the places that they want to follow you. That is entirely true. I usually like having everything like consistent, but like I'm going through some uh, some online presence changes, and so um, you know, just kind of sprucing up the 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 online presence. But uh, 
yeah, I'm excited to be to be putting out more content uh, at a film festival, and, uh, and it's going to be a good time. It'll be nice to hang out and uh, and get to do this film festival thing again in Seattle. <laughs> Absolutely. So very cool. Well, we're going to get into that uh, down in Seattle. But until the next time we hop onto one of these calls, thank you everyone for watching and keep it for real.